لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك Here I am, O oh Allah. Here I am in response to your call. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Here I am, O oh Allah. I answer to your invitation. I present myself to you, O oh Allah. La sharika lak. There is no sharik, there is no associate, there is no partners with you, O oh Allah. Inna alhamda wa ni'mah. All praises. All thanks and appreciation and glorification are for you, O Allah. In alhamda wa ni'mah laka belongs to you. La sharika lak. Again, I do not associate any partners with you, Allah. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Here I am. I present myself to you, O Allah. With a lot of sins. جئتك من بلاد بعيدة بذنوب كثيرة فاغفر لي يا الله. Oh Allah, I come to you with a lot of sins from a very far country. I beg of you, oh Allah, to pardon me and to forgive me, oh Allah. Brothers and sisters, do you for Rahman? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. May the peace and blessings of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with all of us this evening. The local time in New York City, it's approximately 6.35. And alhamdulillah, we want to thank Allah and we praise Him. Tonight or this afternoon being our first online seminar. Tonight we will explain the different packages that is offered by Sara International Travel, insha'Allah. First of all, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een amma ba'd. All praises and thanks are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always. We praise Him and we glorify Him. And we testify that our beloved Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam is the last and final Prophet that Allah has sent into this world. <laughs> Brethren in faith, do you for Rahman? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the command to Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam when he took him from the blessed land of Jerusalem to Makkah al mukarrama the sacred land. He gave him the instruction to build the Kaaba. And he and his son, they stood on the barren land that was not cultivated. And they established the house of worship, the first house of worship that was built for the worship and the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Mecca. And Allah said to Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ya Ibrahim, وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ دَامِرٍ وَعَلَى كُلِّ دَامِرٍ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجِّنْ عَمِيكٍ Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam was commanded by Allah, O Ibrahim, أَذِّنْ Call the people for Hajj. Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Ya Rabb, Oh Allah, who do I call? There's no one in Mecca. Mecca is a barren land. No vegetation. No one is living here. Who do I call? Just you call. Your job is to call. They will come. 
They will come to thee by all means. They will come by thee by traveling by land, by the camel leaning of its long journey. They will come to Makkah. They will come for in it. They will come here to celebrate the praises of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, Makkah, alhamdulillah, wa bifadlillah, Makkah has recorded the biggest assembly of humankind on the surface of this earth without anyone giving any instruction in any language what to do or what not to do. What unites us to come to Mecca? It is the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that each and every one of us believe in that brings together the poor and the rich the white and the black the young and the old the healthy and the sick one all people from all part of this globe whether from brazil whether from china whether from africa whether from hong kong whether from taiwan whether from uzbekistan whether from the Caribbean countries, Makkah witness an assembly of all nationalities coming together to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everyone unite under these words or these phrases that puts together our hearts in one. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik When the plane touches down at Jeddah International Airport and everyone coming off the aircraft with full with emotion Oh Allah You have brought me here you are my host and I'm your guest Oh Allah You have brought me to the land of the prophets <laughs> came to you, O Allah, with a lot of sins. As the Hajj leaves his home, he prepares and he says farewell to everyone. As Hajj, it is to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The concept of us, as in the people of the past, when they used to go to Mecca, they used to spend at least three months in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will walk the entire village from home to home, seeking the forgiveness of everyone and to ask pardon of their relatives, their friends, who they have hurt. Because they are now returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is Hajj. They're not sure whether they will return back to their homeland. So in so doing, they seek the forgiveness of everyone, young or old, because they are now returning back. Allah has given them a chance to stand in front of him on the day of Arafah, whereby they will examine their own self, whereby they will be able to do muhasaba self-examination of their own self insha'Allah ayyuhal ahbab do you for Rahman you are given a special title as of now that you are now the guest of Allah you're not the guest of Allah I'm sorry you are the guest of the most merciful one do you for Rahman the one you're the word daif, guest, is being added to the name of Ar-Rahman, the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah will share with you his mercy now. So you are the guest of the most merciful one, meaning that Allah will treat you with mercy. Man hajj, whosoever, comes, whosoever completes his hajj, la rafa fa la fusuka la wa la jidala fil hajj, when you go to Makkah, you do not engage in any argument. 
You do not curse or yell. You do not fight anyone. You are returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's in control. So as we are now going to be solidifying our intention for Hajj, let us make a clear intention that my Hajj is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you will be tested as of now. Shaitan becomes your, your biggest enemy now. Shaitan comes in your way. You will be tested. Shaitan will tempt you. Why is it I'm going to give my money to go to Makkah? It's six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars. And nafaka fil hajj kan nafaka fi sabi jihad fi sabi lillah. Your money that you spend in hajj, every dirham or dinar or every real or every dollar, it is like you spend in jihad in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your wealth will not be decreased when you spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your wealth will be multiplied. Many times, brothers and sisters, they call me and they said, Imam, Hajj is far on me. And my job is not giving me the concern. And I will quit the job because now I have understood my life that I have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know what? They're fired. They quit. And they go to Mecca and they return back and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open bigger doors and bigger jobs for them. It is all about your intention. Make your intention from this moment that I shall go to Mecca with the intention that my Hajj is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not for to command respect by anyone or not to show someone that I afforded to go to make Hajj, that is why I'm going there, or I'm not going on a journey of excursion or a trip, I'm going on a journey in which my clothing, my cover is taqwa. It is to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we will be able to take questions, but I will ask of you, since it is the first Hajj seminar we are conducting online, we were not able to have this session in a way designed that you will be able to type in the questions as we did in the past. Um, excuse us for today's um, seminar, but you still will be given the opportunity. You can go on your email and send your questions to info, I-N-F-O, at SARA, S-A-R-A, international travel.com. So you can send your questions to sarainternationaltravel.com and inshallah we will be able to answer your questions and I would like to have as much question as possible. The questions, we do benefit from the questions. We want to know how you guys are thinking. And at the same time, when you ask questions, it is not only for your own self, but it is for the benefits of others. So I will ask, inshallah, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now I'll officially uh, begin the session. Welcome all our brothers and sisters to our first session here this evening. And I'm Imam Zamir Sitar. I'm the president of SAR International Travel. I know a lot of you who have called. Um, you, Some of you were able to speak with me directly. And I am thankful that you have given us the opportunity to serve you. We are the servants of the guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Myself and my entire team and family, inshallah, we look forward to have an everlasting relationship of bonded together as brothers and sisters. And this is what Sara International Travel is all about. Be part of this family, of Sara's family. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, a great number of brothers and sisters have already registered. And in terms of our packages, we have we were forced to seek other packages to accommodate our guests. So at this moment, we are about to close off the sale of our packages in a couple of days or, or weeks. And inshallah, we'll be able to serve you on a more relaxed manner. Some of you have been called in the office and you will find that our brothers are very much patient in dealing with all your questions they will spend some time 
a maximum of half an hour answering your questions and giving you full explanation. I have seen and I admire the way they have carried themselves in the past months. May Allah bless our staff and may He continue to grant them the strength to be able to serve you in a better way as the days come closer to the session, inshallah. Now we are all prepared for Hajj this year and inshallah the Hajj will be led by a team of Imams and Mashaikh, Maulanas. We will be having at least 10 Mashaikh will be accompanying this group of Sarah International Travel. And all our Sheikhs and Imams are professional, reliable Islamic scholars who have graduated from an Islamic institution and who have performed Hajj multiple times. So they know the Hajj and they have mastered the Hajj in and out and they have experienced and performed the Hajj many, many, many times, at least 10 to 15 times. So they will be able to give you full and they will be able to give you the type of assistance that you will need, inshallah. Our staff do speak many languages also, including English, Arabic, Urdu, Bengali, Farsi, Turkish, Bosnian, uh, Pashto, um, Punjabi, so many languages, inshallah, our brothers and sisters will be able to cover. We have also, in addition to the Imams and, uh, and Sheikhs who are coming with the trip, at least 10 coordinators, and our coordinators' role and responsibility is to be there and to assist you throughout your travel. From the airport, we'll be having two offices, one in Jeddah Airport and one in Medina Airport. Our offices will be there to receive you on your flight arrival and to assist you at your departure, inshallah. In both hotels in Mecca and in Medina, for those who are going on the long packages, we will be having permanent staff there with 24-hour services in Mecca and in Medina. In Aziziyah also, we'll be having 24-hour services in terms of our customer service desk, whereby you can talk to our staff, you can talk to our coordinators, and they'll be able to assist you, inshallah. We'll be having, in addition to 10 sheikhs, 10 coordinators, we'll be having at least 60 ground staff in Saudi Arabia who will be working along with us. And these are brothers who have been making performing Hajj with us for the past at least five to ten years. They are fluent in many languages Uru, English, Arabic, Bengali, Burma, uh, name it. They, they are very much uh, fluent in all the languages. So they'll be able to assist you and they'll be able to guide you. And the majority of them are boys who have been born in Mecca. So they, they, they know Mecca in and out, inshallah. <laughs> Again, you'll be able to ask questions. You can type your questions in. Go to your email, send us a question. Info, I-N-F-O, at Sarah, S-A-R-A, international travel dot com. At this moment, inshallah, I would like to welcome all of you, those who have came on late. Um, I'm Imam Zamir Sitar. And on behalf of the entire staff and my family, I would like to welcome you. This is our first online seminar. And I know for a fact this seminar tonight is being viewed by brothers and sisters, not only in North America, but beyond in South America and in the United Kingdom. Welcome all. Um, before I proceed, we also had two weeks ago, we had a very fruitful seminar that we conducted in the state of Florida. Alhamdulillah, the participation of many who came from far, came from West Palm Beach, they came from Miami, they came from Orlando, from different uh, cities and towns in the state of Florida. Alhamdulillah, we want to say thank you to Maulana Shafayat Muhammad and his team for doing a wonderful job in the state of Florida. Alhamdulillah, we are having this year probably one of the biggest group that will be leaving from Florida, bi'iznillah. Again, inshallah, we would like to say welcome. And now I will begin to explain the different packages. We have on our website six packages. 
And at the side of those six packages, there's another six packages. So we have 12 in total. Packages started from one. The numerical value of the package represents the time of departure and return. So package one is divided into two categories. Category A, category B. Package two, category A, category B. Three, four, five, six. What does the letter A represent? It represents the place in which you will be during the days of the monastic of Hajj. A, the letter A represents where your location, where your tent would be in the days of Mina and Arafat. A means that you will be in the VIP tent across the street of the Jamarat. Where the Jamarat, the Jamarat is the place where you will have to stand. You have Jamarat to Sugara, Wusta and Kubra. The small Jamara, the medium Jamara and the large Jamara. So this place is called the Jamarat. You will have to go there on the 10th day of Zil Hijjah to stone at the big Jamara. Jamaratul Kubra. Now, inshallah, in a couple of days, we will send you a manual and you will be start reading up all these terms and you'll be able to master these terms. So the first day, the 10th of Zil Hijjah, you will have to stone Jamara, Jamaratul Kubra. On the 11th day, you will have to stone Jamara after Salat al-Zuhar, after Zawal, after the sun has turned. On that day, you will stone seven pebbles at the small, then the medium, then the large. On the 12th day, you have to return back to the Jamarat and stone small, medium, and large. Now, where your tent would be, it's across the street. You will be the closest regarding anyone performing the Hajj in the world. You are the closest to that tent, uh, to that Jamara. Your tent is the closest tent in front of the Jamara. You will be overlooking the operation of the Hajj. It is the most expensive spot in the Hajj area. And that is why it's more costly to stay there. So that is A. B, classification B means you'll be staying in the North American section that houses not only the North Americans, but the Europeans, those from Australia, and those from New Zealand and Fiji Islands and, and, and those parts. All of us would be there these four continents, of course, South and North America, Europe, New Zealand, and Australia, will be in one area, and this is approximately 40 minutes away from the Jamarat walking. Transportation is not allowed to enter at all. No buses, no cars is allowed to travel within from the tent to the Jamarat. So there's tunnels that we will have to walk through and it will take one approximately 40 minutes to walk from Mina, from your tent to the Jamara. That is classification B. However, Sahara International Travel has taken the highest class of service where these tents are located in classification B Sarah International has been noted that we have been paying for the highest form of service there. So we would have the best tents. The interior wall will be sheetrock. And you will have semi-beds to sleep on. Something resembling a bed. And you will have good meals. And you will have tea and coffee 24 hours and cold um, beverage, um, mineral water. You will also be having the best tent area in Arafat. It is 
as the, our hajis normally describe it. It is a true representation of a feelings of one being in Jannah on the day of Arafah. Seeing the waterfall and the garden, the bustan, and all is green and flowers. And we have always been under a great mutawif, one who has been receiving the award as the best mutawif of the year for the past five years. His service, there is no second to him. His name is Zaki Kamal, Mutawif Zaki Kamal. So inshallah, if you choose to go in a, a in section A, you will be in front of the Jamara. And if you choose to be in section B, you'll be away from the Jamara approximately 40 minutes, but the condition is superb. It is only as if you are suffering from any sickness and cannot walk, well then I would advise you to speak to us, discuss this with us, and inshallah we will try our utmost best to see what arrangements could be made for you. Everything is possible at Zara International Travel. Our service, it is our dedication, our commitment, it is to serve you with excellence, inshallah. Uh, so all our packages, one to six, is subdivided under two categories, A and B. Now, the hotels in Mecca for all packages, except six does not have a hotel in Mecca, six will only be staying in Azizia. Package one, two, three, four, five will be staying at the Hayat Regency. And Hayat Regency Hotel in Mecca, it is one of the best hotel in terms of location today in Mecca. Because of what is happening, Mecca is under construction and the other hotels are affected because of entry to the haram being enter being entering because of the fact the other hotels are in front gate number one and gate number one is being affected now with the expansion of the haram that is closed and the two minarets have been removed and the haram is being expanded in that area so one would have to walk approximately 10 to 12 minutes to get entrance into the harm coming off from the Zamzam Tower. So coming out from Hayat Regency Hotel, you're walking directly into the Haram, through King Fahad's door. It's a matter of three minutes away from the Haram only. So it is the closest hotel presently in Mecca in terms of distance to the Haram where the entrance is concerned. There are many other hotels but you have to walk to gain entrance into the haram. There may be, there may be, when you look at the location, you will see, oh, it's next to the haram. But next to the haram does not mean anything. How would you enter into the haram? Package, um, all the packages A and all the packages B, package B will be staying in the same hotel also, in Hayat Regency, and in Medina, from one to six package will be stayed at the DR International Hotel, which is a very, very close hotel to the Haram, uh, to the ho to the Haram Medina, and it's accessible for both brothers and sisters to enter from the main entrance of the Haram. We are very much selective in choosing our properties. We take in consideration that they may be elderly sisters and they may be elderly brothers. While all the hotels around the Haram in Medina are good for brothers and could be accessible for brothers. But sisters have a problem because sisters will have to walk from the front to come back to the back and it will take 15 minutes. And that is why Sarah International Travel, we are very picky and we are very selective in making sure that we choose hotels that is in Markazia area, which is a central area, which is at the back of the Haram, so that sisters will walk from their hotel into the haram at the back you know if you're staying in front it's a journey of 15 minutes they have to walk across from the front and come around to the back and you're talking about doing this at least five times a day so it's a long walk so alhamdulillah um, our hotel dr international it is not more than two and a half to three minutes walk to the haram 
between you and the haram is only two buildings. That close it is. Okay, I will just give a full walkthrough now of all the packages. I've talked about A, I've talked about B. I will now talk about the different packages. And then, inshallah, I hope to touch the performance of Umrah today, inshallah, how Umrah it is being performed. Someone calls the office and he's interested in Hajj. And he's not certain. Um, and he's looking for guidance. The first question we would ask him, are you okay to take approximately three weeks of your vacation from your job? If someone has three weeks of time off, well, then we would immediately recommend to you package five. But then he may tell us, oh, I want to go to Medina first. I don't want to go to Mecca first. Well, then we will say, well, then take package two. Package one and package two and package six and package three. Package one, two, three and six enters from Medina airport. So coming to Medina, it's a lesser weight in the airport in terms of timing. And the distance from the airport to the hotel, it's only approximately 15, 20 minutes traveling by the bus from the airport in Medina to the hotel. Mac coming to Jeddah airport, it's going to be at least one and a half hour because of the long distance. But there's good and there's benefits also in going to Mecca first. So we will touch about that also. So package one, someone will say, oh, I want to go to Medina first, but my time is not enough. I only can take 14 days off. Well, then we will say, brother or sister, the package that you need to take, it is package six. Package six has no hotel in Mecca to stay in. It's a very short package. It is 16 day, uh, 14 days, including dates of travel. You will leave America either on the 13th or 14th and return back on the 27th or 28th. So your time that you'll be spending in Mecca and Me uh, Mecca, Medina is very short. So let's start from package six. You will arrive in Medina. You'll be able to stay four or three days in Medina only. And the Sunnah of Ziyarah, it is three days. So that's why we will give three days. But there's a serious hadith of the Prophet wasalam, whosoever comes to Hajj and he does not visit me, it's like he turns his back to me. So we encourage everyone to go to Medina also. In, in completing your Hajj, you have completed the ziyarah of Rasulullah wasalam. And whosoever comes to visit me after my death, it's like if he visited me when I was alive. So if you visit Rasulullah wasalam, you visit Medina, and you pray in Masjid Nabawi, it's like you visit Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was there alive. And you will get the blessings of praying in Masjid Nabawi and praying in Rawla Sharif. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ma bayna bayti wa minbari rawdatum riyad al jannah. The place, the distance between my house, you know, that Rasul house now is incorporated in the masjid after the expansion his house was very small it was like a room he was in the house of Aisha when he died the, the distance between my house the wall of my house and the member and the member is today in the same spot as in the past the distance between my house and my member is Rauda min Riyad al Jannah it is considered one of the gardens of the gardens of paradise. So if you pray in, in Rauda Sharifa, it's like you pray in Jannah. And that is why we will always encourage our brothers and sisters, spend some time every day in Medina, in Masjid Nabawi, in the Rauda Sharifa. Go and try to pray at least every day two rakah. You want to build your home in Jannah. And Alhamdulillah, Masjid Nabawi these days are open 24 hours. In the past, three, four years ago, it used to be closed in the night. 
after Salat al Isha, one hour after Salat al Isha, Masjid Nabawi is closed. Everyone has to get leave. But now, Alhamdulillah, some of the doors are closed, but the, but the Masjid is open and you can spend the night in Masjid Nabawi. Masjid, uh, when you come to Medina, you will visit Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You walk on the you walk on the footstep. You walk on the place where Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam walked on. You will be blessed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You will be the guest of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Medina Al Munawwara, the city of light, the place of revelation, the place of which. It's called the city of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. When he left Mecca, he migrated to that city, the city of the Hijrah. You'll feel that the people there are so nice and hospitable. They are so conscious of their business with you. You go to shop to buy stuff from them. They'll tell you, Sallu ala Rasulullah. Give salams to Rasulullah. They will never dispute with you. They're so cool and they're so nice and calm that Alhamdulillah you'll feel the difference, the sakin and the tranquility being in Medina as in comparison with other cities. Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam has advised us so many ahadiths about the fada'il of Medina and we will speak about fada'il, the virtues of Medina in one of our other sessions. But today let's let talk about the Hajj package. Now you are in Medina Al Munawwara, and you have uh, arrived on package six. In which package six that you have arrived, you will be standing three to four days. Maximum stay in Medina for any group would be from the first to the fifth of Zil Hijjah. This year, the fifth of Zil Hijjah, inshallah, will be um, on the on the day of Jumaa. That is according to the calendar projected. And if it is, if the fifth of Zil Hijjah, based on the sighting of the new of the crescent of Zil Hijjah, uh, and the, the the calendar remains as as um, calculated, well then we will pray Salat al Jumaa in Medina and then we will leave. So let's talk about package six. You now arrive in Medina. You will then, inshallah pray in Medina from your arrival to the departure which will be Friday in on Friday you will put ihram on and you will leave after Salat al-Asr or Maghrib we will ask the government permission to leave a little bit late in the afternoon and we will get to Azizia all the buses will be going to Azizia where is Azizia now everybody have a negative concept of Azizia. Azizia is a suburb or is a town or a village out of Mecca. It is between Mina and Mecca. It is a suburb, it is a city between Mina and Mecca. The government law today because of the fact there's only 15 to 20 five star hotels in Mecca that to accommodate all these two three million people who are coming for Hajj the government have given the license and permission to these hotels that they have divided the stay in each hotel in Mecca to only accommodate Hajjis for a maximum four five to six days so the entire month of Hajj the days to spend is divided in approximately five stay so for package six, there is no stay in Mecca that is applicable because you are on an express trip. You will arrive in Mecca in Aziziyah on the six in the morning, maybe before Salat al Fajr. So you'll be there on Saturday, the sixth of Zil Hijjah. And now Allah has blessed you. You came to Aziziyah. The first thing you will do, you will have your breakfast, your, your prayer fajr, you have your breakfast and so. If you choose to take some hours of rest, that's fine. But you'll be in the state of Ihram because you will leave Medina in a state of Ihram. You will stop at Masjid Bir Ali, which is the Mikat, and you will make your intention for Umrah and you're coming to Mecca. After arriving in Mecca, the bus will take you straight to Azaziya, 15 minutes away from Mecca. You will then put your luggages in your hotel. 
we have a hotel this year last year we had a hotel everyone has requested us to return back to the same property wonderful property it's not an apartment building like other groups that they take our building in Azizia is a hotel with toilets and baths in the room with a kitchenette each person having their own bed maximum beds in the room is four beds with with a, a, a um, with some um, other basic facilities that are needed during the Hajj and we have three or four lobbies and we have two big musalla one for ladies one for men and we have a lot of facilities we have so many elevators also in the in the, in the building our Azazia is not like what it is being echoed out there that some of the groups they only go into the do, the, the domestic or residential apartment buildings of course Sarah travel used to uh, to take those buildings also in the past when these buildings were not available but now hotels are starting to be built in Azizia and there are few hotels maybe a dozen hotels now in Azizia and Alhamdulillah we have taken one of those properties so our property has toilets and bath in the room other groups are sharing apartment buildings and those apartment buildings have two toilets for four rooms sometimes and nothing is wrong with that we have passed through that stage and our building was always top of the line in terms of cleanliness and so on but now from last year we are in this private building in which we are able to put you uh, in four in a room now everyone must understand now you are from Medina to Mac to Azizia and you have arrived in Azizia and you, you are there on the 6th of Al Hijjah today is the day you will be performing Umrah so now you will put your luggage in your rooms and then you will we have transportation we'll have shuttle buses that will be taking 24 hours from Azizia to Mecca to the Haram take you and bring you back so if you choose to go in the morning that's fine if you choose to go in the evening that's fine seventh of Zil Hijjah which is Sunday it's going to be called a rest day we probably will only be given the bus to go to Haram in the morning for Salat al-Fajr and the afternoon we will not advise you to travel to Mecca that does not mean that we will deprive you that does not mean that we would not allow you to go you will go but you will go on your free on your own um, we will encourage you to stay in the building uh, in ISIS here because we will have a, a um, an evening seminar on Hajj the performance will remind you about the performance of monastic of Hajj what to be done and what not to be done how to take your luggages and all the fine and 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 um, last minute advice will be given to you at that time that's the climax now of your trip so that's on Sunday inshallah Monday morning after Salat al-Fajr everyone will be in Haram and you'll be transported to Mina you perform the Hajj and after the Hajj is completed you will start coming back to your home 26 uh, tw 27 and 28 this is package 6 27 and 28 your departure your return back to home is 27 and 28 this is regards to package 6 now you have a choice you can go in the VIP tent in package 6 that would be 6a or you can do 6b this is covering every single thing that is required for you to be done in Hajj there's nothing that you will we do not encourage anyone coming with Sarah international travel we do not encourage you to leave away this even the small pet Sunnah everything we will advise you the choice is yours if you want to perform a correct Hajj come with Sarah international travel this is what we guarantee you our imams and our sheikhs are there to advise you there'll be daily dars in every single hotel in Mecca in Medina in Azizia in Mina there'll be non-stop lectures sometimes we have lectures that the brothers will tell okay it's enough now Alhamdulillah our imams have done a wonderful job in the past years and they're committed to a good job this year also I've explained package six this is the short package 
I will now explain package one. Package one leaves America on the 13th and 14th. Arrives in Medina. We'll go through everything like package six. But the difference in package one now is that after on the 27th, when people will start coming home from package six, you will be transported. You will be taken to a hotel in Mecca, which is the Hayat the Hayat Regency Hotel, whereby you will stay from that day until the thir uh, until the thirtieth, or or th I think the first, the first of of October. So you will stay there for about four days, inshallah. And this is something that um, I always encourage. Also, um, you come into Mecca, and this journey is once in your life. Your Hajj is once. And if you can make the special effort to complete all your ibadat, not even not to give the the, the act of of pushy and 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 just to get 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 over it, you will contemplate and you will give everything its own time. This is what we encourage everyone to do. Give a couple extra days. Your job will always be there. Your property will still be there, inshallah, when you come back. You're going to be Allah's guest. You cannot ask for nothing better than this. So this is package one. Package two is everything that package one has. You will leave on the 13th of September from the United States or the 12th. It's a bit long package. It's one or two days more. You will go to Medina, stay in Medina, come to Azaziya, stay in Azaziya, perform the Hajj. Then you will be taken to the hotel in Mecca, the Hayat Regency. But now, instead of, when you check in, instead of leaving with group one, package one, you will be staying two to three additional days. Your flight will leave on the third, on the third of October, then you're leaving to come back home. So you will pray Salat al Juma in Mecca. Juma is on the second of October, so you will pray Juma, and then you will leave Mecca after the second to come back home package number three is like this it's why, why it is called package three because you're visiting all three holy mosques in the same trip and this is the time when we talk about Masjid al-Aqsa it's the month of Rajab and we always remind ourselves about the story or the incident or the miracle of Isra al Mi'raj, the bodily ascension of the Prophet from Masjid al Aqsa, from Masjid al Haram to Masjid al Aqsa, the entire region there, it is blessed. And all took Rasulullah to show him some of the signs. And this is a trip of a lifetime. I salute those who are going on this trip. It's really a, a, a great trip of visiting all three mosques. You will start off from visiting Masjid Al-Aqsa, the farthest mosque. So you're going to Jerusalem and you will see the suspended stone and you will pray in Masjid Al-Aqsa. You will be there for Salat al Juma. You'll be leaving on the 8th of September and you'll be going to Jordan and spend the night and then you'll be taken the following day, the Thursday, you'll be taken to Jerusalem. And you will stay Thursday, Friday, um, Saturday. You'll come back on the 14th or 13th, you'll come back to Jordan and probably spend the night. And then 14th, you'll be flying from Amman directly to Medina. So you will, you will be visiting the entire region of Bethlehem. You'll be visiting Hebron where Ibrahim alayhi salam lived with his wife Sarah and their son Ishaq and Ishaq's wife. They're buried there. All four are buried there. It's called, it's called Haram uh, uh, um, Al-Khalil. And you will visit the city also of Jericho, which is the lowest point on earth. You will visit the entire region of Masjid Al-Aqsa. You will be touring the area 
in which Sulaiman alayhi salam lived. And you will pray Salat al Juma in Masjid al Aqsa Sharif. And you will visit Masjid Qubbat al Sakhra. The, 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 the suspended stone. The Masjid of the suspended stone. So this is a beautiful trip. When you come back to Amman, you will visit Ashab al Kaf as described in Surah al Kaf. And you will visit the Dead Sea. And you will visit the present day new mosque, King Abdullah Mosque and King Hussein Mosque. And then you will say farewell to Jordan and you'll be leaving Amman to Medina al Munawwara. Your package now, when you arrive in Saudi Arabia on the 14th, is exactly as package two. So someone cannot go on package uh, Jerusalem, or let's say some relative want to go there to Jerusalem and the other relative uh, wants to come only in Saudi Arabia because it's very difficult to go with foreign pass passport. We can only get the visa for you to go to Jerusalem if you're 10 of the same nationality. So sometimes it's difficult. So, but Alhamdulillah, we did it two years ago for um, some of our brothers from the African continent, um, Sierra Leone and those places. Trinidad, uh, we did it for Guyana, we did it for uh, Alhamdulillah, we did it for many nationality. Um, but sometimes uh, cer certain nationalities are not allowed to go there. I think Pakistan nationalities are not allowed to travel and Bangladesh. So uh, Jerusalem, if the relative want to travel there, then they will be selecting package number two to be on the same program. So they will begin their journey on the 14th together and complete their journey on the 3rd of October. That is package number three. Package number four is the longest package. I think it's about 27 or 28 days. Leaving from America, inshallah, on, on the 15th. On the 15th of September, you leave from America and you'll be traveling to Mecca, arrive in Jeddah airport and then be transported to Azizia. So you will stay in Azizia from your arrival until the Hajj. After Hajj, you will be coming to Mecca. You will stay there until the 3rd of October. So after Hajj is completed, you'll be then taken to Mecca at the Hayat Regency where you will spend from your arrival in Mecca to from after the Hajj is completed when you check in Hayat Regency you will stay until the 3rd of October on the 3rd of October then you will go to Medina inshallah and you will spend approximately 10 days in Medina to complete your 40 Salah this is called the 40 Salah package mashallah I've seen a lot of people um, registering this year for this package it has really attracted a lot of people this year so you will be there in Medina, inshallah, and you will be spending your time visiting um, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you'll pray all your salah as if you are, I mean, going to be returning back, I think your return would be on the 13th, on the 13th of October. Um, package number five, you'll be leaving Mac. You'll be leaving your, the United States or Canada or Britain or Guyana. And this is the fastest package that has been sold in the market. This will be having a lot of uh, brothers and sisters on. This package is a very easy package for many. They love this package. They go to Mecca and they're able to perform multiple Umrahs. They're fresh. They arrive. They're still energetic and they do a lot of ibadah. They used they spend a lot of time in the haram. So you will leave America on the 8th of October, uh, September, arrive on the 9th of October, uh, September, leave on the 8th, arrive on the 9th, and some people are leaving on the 7th and having a day to stay in Dubai or transit point. Um, most of these cases when you have to stay. At a hotel we are providing the hotels also for you to stay and um, so you relax and this is really good when you when you have to go on a trip like this and you, you you arrive at the transit point and you stay the night there 
next morning you'll put your ihram on and then you're coming to the airport in the state of ihram alhamdulillah your ihram is clean nice fresh and you are going to mecca inshallah to perform your umrah so you will arrive in mecca inshallah and you'll perform umrah and you will change out of ihram and then you will uh, go on the 14th you're going to Medina you'll be flying to Medina inshallah by aircraft so international travel you normally take the entire aircraft so you'll be the only passengers in that aircraft and you will take off from Jeddah and you will arrive in Medina our team will be there to receive you in Medina and we'll take you to the Yara International Hotel and you'll stay the five nights of, of five days in Medina and then you'll come back to Azaziya and you'll perform Umrah again and then you will stay in Azaziya perform the Hajj and then you will start coming back home on the 27th or the 28th inshallah that is package number five package number six we have gone through this already this is the shortest package this is the package where we say that it's an express package now um, I've gone through all the packages there and um, I think we can start taking some questions now um, if anyone has questions we can start taking the questions um, I have a question here um, what is the actual date of departure from New York uh, first of all the person has to state which package and I think I've given um, and I come for all the packages in terms of dates. So you have to be specific when you're asking the question, <coughs> what what package you're asking about, and um, and then we'll be able to answer that question. But we're flexible with the dates also. If someone cannot go for the first date of departure, they'll say, okay, put me on the second date. Like for package six, we have two dates. We have 13, we have four, we have 12 also. 12, 13, 14, but 12, when you depart on the 12th, you'll be staying one night at the transit hotel. Okay, so you will still arrive on the 14th in Medina, inshallah. Um, I think I have covered the packages here, and it is quite clear now regarding all the packages. And let me make it very clear, all our packages are staying in Azizia Hotel that's a must that is a must there's no escape from that so no one would not show up and it's very much very very much clear on our website and i encourage you to go back on the website to read the itinerary study the itinerary understand your day-to-day -day program what you will be doing in addition to the team that we are taking as coordinators and imams sarah international travel has been taken a medical team of doctors we call it North American Medical Clinic that we have established in Mecca to serve the Hajis our team will be serving the Hajis there from the beginning to the end of your journey so you arrive in Mecca you need medical treatment alhamdulillah basic things they will be serving you if it is something that they cannot manage well then they will refer to the hospitals and our staff will escort our hajis to the hospital and make sure you're taken care of properly so anyone suffering from any medical complications medical sickness you make sure you have a referral from your doctor from before you travel let the doctor record all your sickness on a document and that you will leave back home a copy and you will take a copy with you to be given to your group leader or the medical doctor who is on board so that if in the event something wrong with you they're able to answer your question I have one question before I proceed on the performance of Umrah uh, Assalamu Alaikum how far is the hotel in Aziziya from the Haram and how long of a walk from Haram and uh, and from Mina please advise okay this is three questions Um, how far is the hotel from Azizia to the Haram it's approximately on a normal day I was in Mecca about three weeks ago and it took me um, it took me like about eight minutes to drive 
from our hotel as Zia Hotel to Haram. But don't go with that expectation in Hajj. The roads are sometimes jammed. It's like any highway in the United States. Sometimes I travel from my home to my job. It takes me uh, 45 minutes. And someday it takes me one and a half hour. There is one lane is closed. There is an accident. There is something. Uh, in the Hajj time, I will say to anyone, it's a distance approximately half an hour by normal drive. How long a walk from the Haram um, to Azaziya? This is not something that I think is practical, to walk from the Haram to Azaziya. Um, it will take you a long time. It's approximately three, three or four kilometers, I think. I'm not sure. Um, I don't want to be quoted where this is concerned at all. I am not sure. Uh, what we what we normally would do in the past and present is that we choose our properties closest to, in terms of location, we try to cl choose the building being closer to Mina rather than it's close to the Haram because we need to access the building during the days of Hajj. And uh, during the days of Hajj, we are in Mina. So we probably will need to access the building in the days of Hajj. I hope I have answered this question correctly and I understood it. Okay, the brother uh, returned back the question by saying, um, package 5B, when will we wear the ihram for Umrah? Package 5B, if you're traveling, and there is a transit point, well, at the transit airport, you will put the ihram on. Let's say you're traveling from America to Dubai or America to Qatar, America to Jordan, America to um, Frankfurt. You will put your ihram on at the transit airport and then you will proceed, inshallah, for Umrah to Mecca. And if you're traveling by Saudi Arabian airline, well, then there is no transit point because it's a straight flight, direct flight. You will put the ihram on before your arrival. You have to be in the state of ihram before you arrive. All who are traveling on package five, you must be in the state of ihram before the aircraft touches down Jeddah airport. Approximately one hour prior to the arrival at Jeddah airport, the pilot will say, do you for Rahman, O guest of the most merciful you are about to pass over the miqat those who are going to holy mecca for the performance of hajj or umrah please assume the state of ihram ihram is a state it is not the physical clothing only that we wear on but there's a lot of rules that has to be taken in consideration from this moment so you will have to put on your haram those who are traveling on saudi arabian airline to put on ihram before you arrive, inshallah, at Jeddah airport. One of our brother is asking regarding to luggage. What can we carry in terms of luggage? We will send you, inshallah, a list of recommended items that we would advise you to take. Not too, not too much of clothing, some medication, what are the basic medication to, to be taken and so on. So we will send you a, a list of items, inshallah, in, the, in, in another week or two. Um, do we get a, do we get to carry out, do we get, carry our cell phone? Yes, uh, we recommend. We will be giving you a SIM card, a Saudi Arabian SIM card. Each traveler, each guest of Allah will be given a, a SIM card. That SIM card, we will have your number that it will be assigned to you before you leave the United States. And you will have that card. The SIM card has to be unlocked. The, the, the phone has to be unlocked. And that phone, as soon as you arrive in Saudi Arabia, at Jeddah Airport or Medina Airport, you just take out your American SIM and you put your, your Saudi SIM it will be activated. You just press the call, call back home. Say, Assalamu Alaikum, I just arrived. You can end the call. They will call you back now. 
you can receive any amount of call on that sim but we will give you i think about a maximum about 20 reals worth in in on your sim and you can recharge your sim card uh, as you need it in all our buildings in all our hotels has wi-fi um, alhamdulillah in mecca in medina has wi-fi you know what we do for hajis in Azizia, there is Wi-Fi. In Mina, we have taken Wi-Fi. In Arafat, we have taken Wi-Fi. Alhamdulillah, in the past two years now, we are making collective dua from Arafat. And we have our brothers and sisters having their iPods open. And they encourage their family back home to join and say, Ameen. Alhamdulillah, this is something that Sarah International Travel has been doing. And this is all for the sake of Allah Subhanahu So you can get your family back home and you will advise them okay we'll be standing for dua at approximately four o'clock on the day of arafah i'll be standing and they will open their computers and they'll be able to join you inshallah In terms of vaccination that are needed for the Hajj, it is only one, which is called the um, the meningitis vaccination. Um, Sometimes um, it is advisable also to take the the um, the flu shot, but of course you will contact and, and and consult with your doctor. But what is needed? What is a must? Everyone must have a vaccine that is called meningitis. And the meningitis vaccine is only valid for five years. Right now, we are in the process of asking everyone to send in copies of the passport. So I'm begging you, brothers and sisters, I'm pleading to you, those who have not sent in your passports, please send in your passport tomorrow or Tuesday. All it takes from you, five, ten minutes, go to a FedEx office go to a staple some way and ask someone to scan your passport and send it to us we need to examine your passport there was a major problem last year in which many did not had an opportunity to make hajj because of the passport problem we need to examine your passport to make sure that that passport is a passport that will be accepted for hajj that has a barcode or has a, an electronic a chip on it that it could swipe if you do not have a passport that has a electronic device to read it, it will not be able to complete the process for you to be granted a visa. So everyone, please send us your passports, copies. We are now taking passport copies. Uh, the original passport, you will send this to us after Ramadan. On the first week after the Eid, you will send us the original passports, inshallah. Um, the visa processes, inshallah, will start around three weeks after the Ramadan. That's what we are hoping, inshallah. So even one month, but there's a lot of work. Our office is busy. Some night we work there till 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the office. We want to make sure that everybody who are registered with us, we are working with you on a one-to-one, -one, my brothers and sisters. You will know the patients that we are. We will not overbook by one haji. And we will not accept someone under false pretense that he is going to haji when we know that his documents are not correct. So we are working with everyone. And if anyone who has special requests, please communicate with our office and let us know, inshallah. The 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 email address to send us your questions are um is info I N F O at sarah s a r a international travel dot com alhamdulillah a, these these questions were really good and beneficial to to everyone here um so you can continue asking your questions inshallah i would just like to today to give a brief um demonstration or explanation about umrah 
in the days to come inshallah we will send out a video clip with the words the pronunciation of talbiyah labbaik allahumma labbaik labbaik la sharika laka labbaik inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika lak and we will advise everyone to please start memorizing these words and understand the concept of what you're saying and then we will send another one which says rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al nar oh allah give me the good things of this life and give me the good things of the hereafter and save me from the torment of the hellfire oh allah this is what you recite in tawaf and inna uh, safa wal marwata min sha'air allah faman hajj al bayta aw i'tamara fala junaha alayhi an yatawafa bihima وَمَنْ تَتَوَّأَ خَيْرًا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ شَاكِرٌ عَلِيمٌ This other verse, inshallah, we will send out the words, the text, translation, and we will ask everyone to memorize. So these three, uh, these three um, um, small du'as, we will encourage everyone um, <clears throat> uh, Let me just touch on this last question here, then I will do the performance of Umrah. Uh, for packet 6b after Azaziyah, how many days will will be staying in the North American tents? For package 6b after Azaziyah. Okay, Azaziyah, you arrive on the 6th day of Zul Hijjah. So you'll be there on the 6th and the 7th. On the 8th day of Zul Hijjah, you're going to move to Mina. And on the 9th day of Zul Hijjah, you're moving to Arafat. And then after Arafat in the night, you are going to spend in that night now in Musdalifa. With the tenth morning after praying Salat al Fajr, you will leave immediately to come back to Mina. You will stay in Mina, 10th, 11th, 12th. Those who wish to complete their Hajj on the 12th, فَمَنْ تَعَجَّلَ فِي يَوْمَيْنْ فَلَا إِسْمَ عَلَيْهِ. Whosoever would like to complete the Hajj on the 12th day of Zil Hijjah, there is no sin. You're free. Your Hajj is complete. It's called Ta'jil. You are allowed to leave, but you have to leave before sunset on the 12th of Zil Hijjah. And whosoever wish to stay the next day, the 13th of Zil Hijjah, you can stay also. We will be making provision for both people who want to leave on the 12th and people who want to stay on the 13th. So now you will, if you stay on the 13th, you will be having your meals there in Mina. And if you choose to come back to Azaziya on the 12th in the evening, you will have meals in Azaziya and then you will start leaving to come back on the 27th, inshallah. So the 26th is the 13th of Zilhijjah, I think. And then the, 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 the 27th, you will start come back to the United States. For package 4A, where and when do we start putting Ihram on? You will have to put Ihram on at the transit airport, if your flight is a transit flight, or you will put Ihram on if you are going on Saudi flight before you arrive in Jeddah airport. Whatsoever applies to package 5 applies to package 4. You have to arrive in Jeddah airport in the state of Ihram. For package five, if we are traveling to Jeddah on Saudi, when are we, when are, what are the steps, procedure of getting into the state of Ihram? As I said before, if you're traveling on Saudi Arabian airline and you're on package five, um, you, one hour prior to the aircraft descending, the pilot will announce those who are coming for Hajj or Umrah you are about to pass over the Mikat you cannot pass the Mikat save and accept that you are in a state of Ihram so immediately for the men you will leave and go at the back of the aircraft Saudi Arabian aircraft has a place that is called the Musalla at that Musalla you can change your clothing there and you will now put on the Ihram clothing for the sister, there is no format of ihram. 
You can wear your normal sh shalwar kameez. That's your ihram. You can wear a white dress. You can wear a black dress, long dress. Nothing to show your figure. Um, um, any type of dress in, in Islam that is accepted by the Sharia, that is, um, that is your ihram for the sisters. And there is no there is no color recommended for ihram for ladies also. Another questioner asks, can you just mention what about our passports and we have and passport must have an electronic chip for scanning. How do you know? We will know inshallah. When you send us a copy, we have a device in our office to start checking the passport. So we would like everybody to send us a passport. My passport was issued back in 2006 and has a barcode for scanning. Once it's an American passport, if it was 2006, it will have that electronic bar. So you can send you can send a copy of your passport, and we will explain to you, inshallah, if there is anything. We have been contacting a lot of brothers and sisters whose passport are irregular at this moment. And we also recommend the validity of the passport to be beyond six months. The Saudi consulate requests that it be six months because of the fact it is done through a machine process today. The computer will not accept it if it is one day less than six months. So we will encourage you to have your passport being valid for eight months. I've seen last year one day made the difference in one brother's passport when he submitted his passport his passport had two weeks beyond six weeks six months two weeks by the time his passport was submitted to the consulate and there was some delays at the consulate at the time when they were to print the visa that morning it was expired by one day he was an indian national and he could have not get the passport saving except that he goes back to Washington and the consulate said to get a new Indian passport it will take at least three months his wife got the visa she was an American uh, national he did not get the visa she could have not traveled to Hajj he could have not traveled to Hajj so please when we tell you get a new passport get a new passport immediately for package 5b will we be able to complete all the jamara before leaving on the 20th yes we are very much we are very much sure inshallah that's why we are not booking anyone's passage airline ticket to return back on the 26th but 27 and 28 yes 27 is is okay for you to return back what about group b from canada who are not performing Hajj from Canada who are not performing Hajj last year those who did not perform Hajj last year from Canada it was because of the fact the rule that came last year that Canadian passport could have not been done here in the United States but this year we have minimum people who we have taken from Canada and those who have already been accepted from Canada be certain that you are going to Hajj inshallah because we have bought a Canadian company um, and we have taken the rights of every single visa so those who stood with us from last year inshallah ta'ala you are going to Hajj this year Um, the questioner was asking a question here. How long is the wait for the train? The train is, um, oh, I should tell you also, um, package A, any any package with A from 1 to 6 that has a 1A, 2A, 6A, this group, inshallah, will be transported also by the train. It's called the Mashari train that takes you from Mina to Arafat, from Arafat to Muzdalifa, from Muzdalifa back to Mina. So you will be going with the train. There is no long wait at all at the train station. However, you have to walk from the tent to the train station.
and it's not a it's not a big walk these days also they have the golf cart that takes you on a quick note how long is it Jeddah airport wait um, the stay in Jeddah airport these days is very minimum and short long ago I remember we used to be there sometime I remember groups used to be there two days Sarah travel used to be there a couple of hours alhamdulillah we had contacts we used to bring government officials and they used to assess us to take everybody out um last year or two years ago i remember when i came to hatch terminal and i called my wife to say i am out the flight landed and then i say i'm out it was only 15 20 minutes only of course i was alone um and it was the hatch terminal but today i can tell you that you are going to be coming out quickly the terminal is so um, designed and so um, it's so uh, it, it's been expanded now, and so many uh, um, officials are working there. Not more than one hour. So what Sar Travel would do at Jeddah Airport? While you um, are coming out, we have our staff will take you to a cafeteria, to a restaurant in the airport, and you will have a meal on the, our expense. We open an account with one of the restaurants at the airport and they will um, be giving you as you wish to eat and we will pay the bill for that. And then from there, um, our staff will be processing the documentation that has to be done and then you'll be leaving from Jeddah Airport to Mecca, inshallah ta'ala. It's not long wait anymore. It's about approximately uh, one hour, one and a half hour you're there. A sister who is not with a mahram, you must travel with a mahram, um, unless if you are above 45 years. If a sister is above 45 years, you can travel to Hajj. You do not need a mahram. All that you need is a consent letter from a male relative. But if you're below 45 years, you must travel with a mahram. We will, uh, the questioner is asking, do you recommend performing Rami? Rami is stolen at the Jamara. Um, during the Sunnah time, yes. Alhamdulillah, we have always been implementing this. And this is something that you will do if you come with Sarah Travel. For package 5B, are we allowed to go to Jeddah? Anytime during the free time in the journey, yes. Um, Alhamdulillah, we know that some people have relatives in Jeddah. Some people have friends, they want to go and visit their relatives. You cannot leave just like this. You have to have a government permit to travel. You, your Hajj stamp is only for Mecca and Medina, your Hajj visa. So if you want to go to Jeddah, we have to seek for you a, a permit. And it's called a Jeddah permit. And this is something... Inshallah, you can discuss with our staff at the air, at our secretariat in Mecca, and they will be willing to seek that for you. We have done it for many brothers and sisters in the past years, and this is something we will continue to do, Inshallah, for our pilgrims. Assalamu alaikum for those people flying to Dubai. What airline are we scheduled to fly on? Does the airline have Islamic accommodation like Saudi Arabian airline does? Um, I am not sure the questioner, um, 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 I'm not sure whether I understand fully, um, for those people flying to Dubai, we have many flights to Dubai. You have from different parts in this country. You have Emirates will be going, you have Delta will be going, you have, uh, um, American airlines and so on. So you have to be a bit, I, I can't answer that question. I, I don't know which person who is going on which airline as yet. Some passengers have been um, already been given a flight, yes. Um, what we're trying to do this, this year is to give you the best flight for your trip in the sense. Um, coming to JFK, sometimes it's a problem in the sense when you return back, you, you cannot join a domestic flight with your Zamzam. 
So that's why we are trying our utmost best to see how we can give you a flight from your your hometown uh, or if we can give you a one through ticket from your hometown and Saudi Arabian Airlines does not allow an add-on ticket so it's only good for those people who are within the vicinity of of um, New York New Jersey tri-state area here well I think we will not be able to answer all these questions and um, able to do the the performance of Umrah if I shave head for Umrah how can I cut hair for Hajj if you shave your head for the Umrah and when it comes to time for Hajj you will have to shave again so you will pass the razor again and when I say you will pass the razor you will not be able to pass the razor yourself but the person who is the barber he will pass the razor to make sure he take off something just to reshave I mean, I am 55. Do I need the consent letter from my husband? Yes. Um, if you are above 45, you can travel to Hajj alone, but you will have to take the consent from your son, your brother, your husband, or your father. The package from Canada, inshallah, um, more than likely those brothers and sisters will be going on air Egypt air Egypt air leaving from Toronto to Cairo we need two set of ihram but Sarah will provide only one set from where will buy another set of ihram you can purchase the other set of ihram while you are in Mecca inshallah our days have been communicated Calculated for 9th to 26th and we have made plans accordingly we want to make sure that the dates are are workable can you answer offline yeah I, I'll call this questionnaire inshallah uh, at the end of the session um, and I will discuss this with you Do we spend overnight in Muzdalifah until Fajr as recommended by the Sunnah? Yes. This is something that we will encourage everyone to do. Hajj with Sarantina is Hajj. Khuzu anni manasikakum. Khuzu anni manasikakum. This is what the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi said. Take from me your manasik of Hajj. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he left Arafat not before the sunset. Let me just go through the process of the Hajj uh, quickly and then um, it will it will give everyone a better understand about the performance of the Hajj. And I'll leave Umrah for the next session, inshallah. You arrive in Mina. This is the Hajj now that we're talking about. The Hajj is like this. On the 8th of Zil Hijjah, we will make sure that you are in Mina to perform Salat al-Zuhar. So you will arrive at the time of Zuhar in, in Mina. You will pray Salat al-Zuhar. Asr, Salat al-Maghrib, Salat al-Isha. You will sleep the night in Mina. The following morning, you will pray Salat al-Fajr. You will wait in Mina until sun completely rise. You will then leave Mina for Arafat. Alhamdulillah, we will be able to get you express buses if you are in, in, in category B. By, by 8 o'clock, you will be in, in Mina, uh, in Arafat. If you are on the train, you will be there by 8 o'clock also or less. So today now you are in Arafat by 8, 9 o'clock. I've seen other groups, they arrive in Arafat, you know what time? 4, 5 o'clock at the conclusion. I'm not exaggerating. 3, 4 o'clock. Alhamdulillah, we have our program and we know what we are doing at Sarah Travel. And we know how to do it properly. Inshallah, you will be there at 8, 9 o'clock. If you ask anyone who went to Hajj with us last year, they will tell you Sarah travel 8.15. We had given breakfast in Mina and we gave you breakfast again in Arafat. This is the day. Al-Hajj Arafah. The day of Hajj is Arafah. If you miss this day, you miss the Hajj. 
Today you're going to come to Arafat and you'll pray Zuhar and Asr. Qasr, shorten. This is the day of expression of dua, communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala non stop. Askar, astaghfirullah, subhanallah, walhamdulillah, walla ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Recite as much Quran as you can. Be in ibadah, be in istighfar. Make dua for yourself, make dua for your family, make dua for your friends, for your children, for your neighbors, everyone. You've done. Arafat is done at sunset. When sunset comes, you're not praying Salat al-Maghrib in Arafat. You will leave Arafat after Salat al-Maghrib time, after sunset. And you will go now to Muzdalifah. Arrive at Muzdalifah. You will arrive maybe in the night, 8, 9 o'clock. You will pray Salat al-Maghrib. You will pray Salat al-Isha at Muzdalifah. And then you will go out to, ga to gather the pebbles. You will take, you will need for the first day of Jamara, you will need seven pebbles. The second day, you will need 21. The third day, you will need 21. And if you will be on the fourth day, you will need 21. That is 63 and 7, 70. So at least you will pick up about 80 pebbles, 81 pebbles. Pick up odd numbers. So in case that one is misplaced, one is dropped, you have extra pebbles there to make up. Now you you have spent this night. This night is a night of Eid. It's a night come before Eid. It's the night when Rasulullah slept a little and he was awake and he made ibadah that night. You will experience now, now you are coming out of Arafah into Muzdalifah. You have nothing there. You are above air. The sky is your ceiling and you are open air like a refugee running for some refuge. You are running to be sheltered tonight. You own nothing. Al Hajj Arafah. Whosoever comes out from Hajj and he does not feel that he is forgiven, it's like the day I came from my mother now, without any sin. Al-Hajj ila al-Hajj maghfiratun lima baynahuma. One Hajj to another is forgiveness of the sins com committed before. So now I, I have come out of Arafah. I must leave Arafah with a full conviction that Allah has forgiven me of all my sins that I have committed. Now I'm going to Muzdalifa and I stay at Muzdalifa the night and then I gather the pebbles and after I ga gather the pebbles I will then be going. I will stay the night here, Mabit. Mabit, I have to spend the night in Muzdalifa. You'll see people leaving and so but don't bother with them. You are spending the night in Araf, in Musdalifa. You will pray Salat al-Fajr next morning. And after Fajr, you will stand in Wukuf. You will stand and make your dua and leave before sunrise. And you are going back to Mina. At Mina, you will come to Mina. You will do Rami Jamarat. We will do your Zabiha, your Qurbani. Once your Qurbani is done, we will announce on the microphone and we will send a text message to everyone. Your Zabiha is done. At this time, you can shave your head, cut your hair for the sisters. They will clip some hair. Somebody have to clip for you. You cannot do your own. You cannot shave your own head. Someone has to cut for you. If you cut, you have to pay a dam. That's for the 10th of Zilhijjah. Then you can go and do Tawaf al Ifada. The Tawafali Father, we will talk about this in our next session. Tawafali Father, or it's called Tawafal Ziyara, or it's called Tawafal Hajj. Three names is associated with the same thing. The 11th, after I, if I do today and do Tawafali Father, I have 10th, 11th, and 12th to do Tawafali Father. I don't have to go today and do it. But if I went to do it today, I come back to Mina. I have to stay in Mina again. This is a Sunnah. Rasulullah he spent that time in Mina. 
I'll pray Fajr, I'll pray Zohar, I'll pray Asr, Maghrib, all my Salah now. After Zawal, after Salat al Zohar, on the 11th day of Zal Hijjah, I will go to Jamara. On the first day yes, yesterday, which is the day of Eid, uh, as soon as I come from Muzdalifah, I go to Jamara. I throw seven pebbles on Jamratul Qubra, on the big Jamara. Each pebble I'm taking, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, seven pebbles. Not all seven one time, no, each pebble. I have completed today seven. Tomorrow, after Zuhar, I'll be doing seven at the small, seven at the medium, seven at the large. I'm done for the 11th. On the 12th of Zilhijjah, I will come back again after Salat al-Zuhar, and I will throw seven at the small, each, Bismillah Akbar, Bismillah Akbar, seven. I'll go to the medium Jamara, al-Wasat, and I'll throw seven. I'll go to the big Jamara and I'll throw seven. If I wish to complete my Hajj on this day, my Hajj is done. I must leave Mina before sunset. Before sunset, I have to leave Mina. If I choose to stay, you are allowed to stay. I will make preparation for you to stay. And what you will do, next day you will throw seven again. And your Hajj is done. You'll do Tawaf al when you're leaving to come home. Inshallah, we will go through the monastic of Hajj. And we will do this two, three times to make sure everyone understands the concept of Hajj. When we when we do Umrah next session, inshallah, next two or three weeks, we'll be doing a session with Umrah. Then we will give you examination. So we will test you. We will send out questions, a quiz. And we will mark the quiz to know that you understand how to perform Umrah. We want you to master Hajj and Umrah the way you master Salah, how to perform Salah. Because you are going there. This is a fard. This is equal like Salah. This is equal like Zakah and Siyam. You must know what you're doing. Imams are there only to assist you. If in difficulties, you may have questions, you may consult with them. They're your consult. What do I do to prevent loss? Good question. We said to you earlier that if each person will have two SIM each person will have a SIM card. So a husband and wife traveling, I will have my own SIM card, my wife will have her SIM card. We do encourage everyone that you must have a telephone with you. Buy the cheapest of telephone even. It's about $25. Try to save half a dollar from now. 50 cents. But that, that has to buy a telephone. You will need a telephone in Mecca. You will receive daily text message from our secretariat. You will know what is the program for today, what is to be done today, important announcements, and so on. So a husband and wife will always be in communication. And alhamdulillah, for the past four or five years, I cannot recall someone got lost. No. When do you recommend buying unscented products for hajj do they have unscented soap selling in Mecca? right here in the united states you can go to the pharmacy and you can get uh, even the doing region so you have unscented soap ask for the unscented soap you can start buying it from now and make a preparation we will soon send out you a list of items and once you receive the license, start packing your suitcase from now. Start walking around the block. It's summer now. Start preparing yourself. Be athletic. Do a little bit of walking every because when you get into Mecca, you have to walk Safa and Marwa. You have to walk long Tawaf. You will try to do a Tawaf every day. Do we pray Zohar and Asr separate in Arafah? If we are not masjid, uh, we are not masjid nimra, but instead in the tents. The Hanafi school here recommends that salah in a salah that every salah has its prescribed time. And the Hanafis will not. If you are from the Hanafi madhab, the brother who is asking the question, um, you will not pray Zuhar and Asr 
combined. You will only pray combined if you are praying with the Imam of Masjid Nimrah. But if you are praying in the tent, according to the Hanafi school, you will pray Zuhar in its time and Asr in its time. All the Mazhab will allow that although they are praying in the tent, that they can join the Salah. Zuhar and Asr on this day is being joined and combined. We will give an option because most of our people who are making Hajj with us are Hanafi and we give our guests the choice of making your own decision whether you want to pray collectively or you want to pray separately. Is there any time, is there any time during Hajj that we will have to walk bare feet? Uh, walk bare feet is only when you're in the Haram, in the, in the sacred mosque. You will walk bare feet. Uh, uh, for the sisters, they, they can wear on a socks. They can do tawaf with a socks from making the tawaf and when you're doing sa uh, Safa and Marwa. Um, yes, the sister, um, she suggested um, tawaf. Yes. So you can put a socks on and if someone has a foot problem and needs to have on a shoe or a footwear, it's allowed. You can wear a shoe in the haram, but take a new pair of shoe because you do not want to contaminate the haram. Take a new pair of shoe, the one that you will, the slipper or so whatever you will wear up to the haram. I have, I had a passenger, a guest once. She was a doctor and she had severe foot problem and she had to wear a shoe on. And she said to me, Imam, is this allowed? I said, of course, sister. You take a new shoe. You show in reverence to the haram. So, she's allowed to wear that shoe on a brother there is requirements that um, well, we will discuss inshallah in the next session about umrah what are the rules of ihram but sisters have no rules if you have to wear a shoe and it's a must to save your foot you can wear a new pair of shoe in the haram yes that has not visited any place before i think uh, this was a great session today um, we would like to have your feedback. Brothers, is it time for Salat al-Maghrib in New York City now? And I would like to take leave. It was a pleasure to spend this time with you this evening. Um, I wish and I pray these are sacred days. The month of Rajab, the month of Shaban, the month of Ramadan. Rasulullah Sallam used to make a famous dua. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Shaban wa balikna Ramadan. O oh Allah, bless us in these days of Rajab and Shaban, and let us be among those who will witness the month of Ramadan. These days are days in which when we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in terms of siyam, in terms of doing uh, acts of charity, in terms of doing a'mal of, of, of goodness, let us try to increase our iman and be uh, more devoted Muslims, inshallah, and with a firm commitment. And I make dua that Allah bless all of us, in the days of Shaban is the time when Allah will write down those who are coming. And there is no name will be in, will be added to this list or no name will be taken off from this list. So let us pray Allah subhanahu. Paying your money does not mean you're going to Hajj. It's who Allah call. You have the requirement. You're in a state of good health. You are in a state of financial position to make Hajj. But that does not mean you're going to Hajj. That doesn't mean you're going to Hajj. It's Allah's call. He has to call you. And if Allah calls you, no matter what, no one can take you back, can hold you back to go to Hajj. It is not your money that will take you. I will conclude with a, a story here. An Imam once delivered the khutbah, it was around the Hajj time, and he starts speaking about the importance of Hajj. And who does not perform the Hajj and afford to make the Hajj? Whosoever affords to perform Hajj has the means, the financial means. He is in a state of good health and he does not perform the Hajj. He does not die in the state of Islam. He dies as a Christian or a Jew or something else. This is very, very serious, my brothers and sisters. Anyone who affords it to perform Hajj, he has the financial means of making the sacred journey. 
it becomes fard upon us at that moment you possess that money. And once you make the intention now, this night, to perform Hajj, and let's say you die before the time of Hajj this year, you will get the rewards you made Hajj. Because Allah knows your intention. Your intention was to perform Hajj. The Imam delivered a beautiful khutbah about performance of Hajj, and in which he said about the chances of performing Hajj, and he said, Everyone at the time of Salat al Asr between Asr and Maghrib today, the day of Jum'ah, is a time of ijabah to dua, time when dua is accepted. Everybody make dua that Allah take you for Hajj. There's no, there is no, there is no trip on earth. There is no gift that you can give someone of going to that that can be the equivalent of going to Mecca. When I went as a child to Mecca at the age of seventeen, I had to touch myself here physically to know that I am in front of Allah's house or am I in a dream? It was very emotional for me. I couldn't imagine myself being there. This is a blessed gift. I've seen people having money and they are not called by Allah to go there. They are not called by Allah. So many have money. They're rich, they're millionaires, they're, they're people who have 15, 20,000 in their savings. But Allah doesn't call them. There's no inclination they want to go to make Hajj. And uh, this brother was a convert to Islam. And this brother listened to the Imam saying, Rake your hands and make dua after Asr. And he made dua. And he asked Allah, oh Allah, take me to Hajj. He just converted to Islam three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, he became a Muslim. And he's poor. He doesn't have the means of going to Hajj. But he said, well, Allah, take me for Hajj. I accept that there is no one except you to be worshipped. At Salat al-Isha, Imam said, a businessman walking in to the masjid, he said, Imam, can I speak with you for a moment? Imam said, yes. He said, here it is, the money. I would like to pay for five brothers to go Hajj. Any five who you choose, they'll go to Hajj. And I don't want to know who you're selecting. Imam said, okay. Jazakallah khair, may Allah bless you. The Imam went to this brother, the convert. He said, are you ready to go to Mecca? You want to make Hajj? The brother said, subhanallah. That was my dua today. That Allah take me to Hajj. Imam said, you're going. Go and get your passport and come. The brother made dua with sincerity. It is not your money that takes you. It is the call from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us all make our sincere niyyah now. Not that we afford to make hajj. It is Allah's call for us to come to hajj. And to be the guest of Rasulullah sallam. I'm going to answer the last question here. See here. Okay, this was the comment from a sister. Um, she said, Jazakallah khairan brother. MashaAllah, very clear and informative. Make dua, inshallah, we are here to serve you. And each person, we make it very clear that we encourage everyone that when is the time for the sessions online, you must participate. And at the same time, when there's a session in the hotel, you must participate. This is where all the information, and you will not make a mistake in Hajj. Once you follow, follow the guidance of the Imams, inshallah, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your amal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your intention. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause all of us to stand in front of his door. In front of the door that dua is accepted. When you go into Haram Makkah, you will see the place of ijabat dua of acceptance of dua, is in front of the Kaaba's door. Al-Hatim, the semicircle. At, uh, um, at, uh, at Maqam Ibrahim. Three places there. Maqam Ibrahim, the station of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, the Hatim, the semicircle, and the Kaaba door, these three places, and Safa and Marwa. Make all your du'as that you can at this faith. There are five places in the Haram that is called the place of Ijabah to du'a, where du'a has been accepted. And from now start making your list of people 
who will come to you as you tell people you're going to Hajj, they'll say, pray for me. Don't tell the person, yes, I'll pray for you, and you didn't pray for him when you go to Makkah. Take a small book and start writing down their names. This person, I promise to make dua for him. I promise to make salams. Somebody came and actually to give salams on his or her behalf. It is an amana. It's a trust you have to deliver when you go to Rasulullah. Allah has blessed you to go there. You have to fulfill the pro promise that you have given to all these people. So start making notes and tell everybody you're going to Hajj. Don't keep it as a secret. Let people know you're going to. You may motivate them also. That you may. They hear that, oh, I'm going to Hajj. Oh, sister so and so is going to Hajj. Brother so and so is going to. Let's join. Why am I delaying? He's so young or he's so old. She's so sick and she's going. I can go also. He's so young. Today I've seen the difference of Hajj. Subhanallah. A young couple just got married. Look, last two weeks a brother signed up. His wife, he just got married. His wife is coming and the first trip together will be a visit to Allah's house. Do you see the impact of this barakah in their life? I've seen the trend today. Married couples are, the, the young people are going to Hajj more than what we used to see 10 years ago, 15 years ago. May Allah help us and bless us. May He accept all our actions, our, our amal. May He show us right as right and help us to follow it. May he show us evil as evil and help us to stay far from that which is evil. Subhanak Allahumma wa hamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal-as. Inna al-insana lafi khus. Illa al-lazina amanu wa amilu al-salihat. Wa tawasaw bil-haq. Wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Let us all recite the talbiyah now before we close. لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته